<laughs> I'm Mercury the first planet from the sun. Let's split me in half and dissect me just for fun. Through human history, there have only been hints that I have a solid core. Now there's more certain evidence. How do scientists know what I made up internally without ever touching a spaceship down on the surface of me? The messenger spacecraft orbited me for four years, starting in 2011, observed by scientists and their peers. Radio observations from messenger were used to determine the location of my rotational pole and gravitational anomalies. This allowed scientists to understand my orientation. Then they used tiny variations in the way I'm spun. They put this data into a sophisticated computer program to figure out my interior composition and how large it spans. The results reveal clues about my internal structure. This confirms I have a solid iron inner core. They think my solid iron core makes up half my entire core and is about 1260 miles wide from what they've explored. Scientists compare me to a cannonball because my metal core fills nearly 85% of the volume of I. I'm Mercury the first planet from the sun. Let's split me in half and dissect me just for fun. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. I am the first planet from our sun, you see. My name is Mercury. Nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree. My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. Messenger of the gods is what Mercury means. The Romans gave me my name, cause I'm the fastest they'd seen. A bit bigger I'd be than the Earth's moon that you see. To fill the Earth one time, it would take 18 of me. I am the first planet from our sun that beams, but I'm the second hottest. I can reach 800 degrees 88 Earth days is the amount that I take To orbit our sun once That makes one year on me I am the first planet From our sun you see My name is Mercury Nothing orbits faster than me The smallest planet with The second hottest degree My name is Mercury No one is smaller than me 59 Earth days equals one day on me My surface is made of stone Covered in craters you see Oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium Make up my exosphere I have no moons and I have no rings But I'm the second densest planet amongst other things I am the first planet from our sun you see, my name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree, my name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. Within the first planet, there's a cooling emergency. This planet shrinking much faster, yes, I am Mercury. In 2004, NASA launched the Messenger Probe. It traveled 1260 days to reach Mercury from your globe. Messenger took about 100,000 images by 2012 Mapping 99% on my surface so you can see it well These images were sent to scientists back to Earth to inspect To confirm what Mariner 10 proved did suspect They saw wrinkles and rifts on Mercury's surface It's like a raisin orbiting the sun But why is this? Scientists confirm Mercury is 
a shrinking since it's distant past. Over four billion years, it's eight miles smaller in diameter, shrinking fast. The reason Mercury is shrinking is because it's cooling core. We'll look inside the planet to see if we can learn more. Mercury has a large metallic core, 85% of its radius, which is very large for a planet, and which we'll discuss when the core does cool over this amount of time a planet will shrink you have learned this in this rhyme when the planet's core cools the surface shrinks with it causing rifts and valleys to occur looking like a raisin i admit to shrink heat must have escaped out of its cooling core this heat must have escaped through its mantle via heat pipes like a door within the first planet there's a cooling emergency this planet shrinking much faster yes i am to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. I'm the second of two rovers launched in 2003. I search for ancient water on Mars. I'm opportunity. After landing on Mars in 2004, I made a number of discoveries. One was minerals dispersed by groundwater causing rock cavities. I happen to be a record holder lasting 15 years on Mars. I was planned for a 90 day mission on the red planet among the stars. I'm the twin of a robot called Spirit that launched before. For me, here's a look at my parts. We'll explore and see. I have panoramic cameras on the top of my camera bar to show NASA what I see on Mars near and far. I've sent 217,594 raw images back to Earth to be reviewed by scientists. The miniature thermal emission spectrometer or mini test you now see provides measurements of mineralogy and thermal physical properties. The magnet array is in the front of me, grabbing dust at a mass, collecting magnetic grains of the red planet's past. The pan cam calibration target looks like a sundial with a tin. It helps fine tune observations from imagers and instruments. My robotic arm instruments do work as a human geologist would, holding and using science tools with its hand or turret like it should. I have six wheels to truck me around the Martian surface you see I have traveled 28 miles and down slopes at 32 degrees this is my multi-panel solar array generating 140 watts of power up to four hours per soul a Martian day the storm stopped me on my record breaking one mission in 2018 I permanently stopped transmitting information on the second of two rovers launched in 2003 I searched for ancient water on Mars I'm opportunity shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters What are the Milankovitch cycles and their role in Earth's climate change? Let's take a look at the three cycles and how they rearrange. The Milankovitch cycles are also called Earth's axis cycles. Now let's learn about them all. The Earth's been orbiting for 4.5 billion years, you know, around the sun on its axis, which often changes, I will show. Earth makes changes in its orbital shape, axis, and orbital plane. These changes are called the Milankovitch Milankovitch cycles, let me explain. The Milankovitch cycles include the three listed here. Let's see how they affect climate change on Earth's big sphere. The first cycle is called eccentricity, which has to do with the shape of Earth's orbit over time, you'll see. Every 100,000 years, the Earth's orbital path does change due to the pull of gravity from Jupiter and Saturn, I explain. Earth's orbit varies between 0.0 almost a perfect circle 2.058 which is slightly elliptical the earth's closest approach to the sun is called perihelion and its farthest distance is called aphelion this cycle creates a 25 percent difference in solar radiation between the southern and northern hemispheres in all nations obliquity is the second cycle we'll discuss 
sun, Earth's orbital run, it's the angle, Earth's axis of rotation's tilted, traveling around the sun. Obliquity is why the Earth has seasons with respect to its orbital plane. This cycle is important to Earth's climate change. It tilts 22.1 24.5 degrees over a 41,000 year cycle called obliquity. As obliquity decreases, it gradually helps make milder seasons. You see increasing ice cover at high latitudes to help reflect the sun's energy. Precession is the third cycle in which the Earth hasn't avoided. It has to do with the direction Earth's axis of rotation is pointed. When the Earth spins on its axis, it starts to wobble. It's true due to the tidal forces caused by the gravitational influences of the sun and the moon. This cycle of axial precession spans about 25,000 years, which makes a seasonal contrast more extreme in one of the two hemispheres. All three of these cycles react with each other in such a way it changes Earth in many ways within climate change. What are the Milankovitch cycles and their role in Earth's climate change? Let's take a look at the three cycles and how they rearrange. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. What's the difference between meteors, asteroids, and comets? Let's take a look at how they travel and form. I am a comet, which is a body of ice, also rock and dust. To be precise, I can be several miles in diameter, mostly ranging from 10 to 100 kilometers for sure. I do orbit the sun just like planets and asteroids do. I have a very elongated orbit, it's true. Comets materialized 4.5 billion years ago from dust and gas. Now you know these icy particles join together by gravity, which does force them into one as you can see. When comets pass through the inner solar system, its ice warms, releasing a trail of gas and dust. That's how my tail forms. I'm a meteoroid. I am found in space. I range in size from a small asteroid to a small dust grain. Meteoroids are thought to form from the collision of asteroids in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter's void. I become a meteor when I burn up in the atmosphere. That's when you see a shooting star or a fireball near. If I survive this burning of entry through your atmosphere and hit the ground, I'm called a meteorite I share. I'm an asteroid, I'm sometimes called a minor planet to some. I'm a rocky leftover from the formation of the solar system. I do orbit the sun, I do range in size from a dust particle to 600 miles wide. I probably consist of clay and silicon rocks, you know. I'm dark in appearance and ancient as far as the solar system goes. The difference between us is quite substantial. We will tell you what this is so you understand in full. A meteoroid is a space rock the size of a grain of dust or a small asteroid, but we can't talk. A comet is an object made of ice and dust. How fun! Often with a gas halo and tail that orbits the sun. An asteroid is an ancient rock from the formation of the place you live called the solar system. What's the difference between meteors, asteroids, and comets? Let's take a look at how they travel and form. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun. I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks. I got my name from the Romans, it means God of the sea. My upper atmosphere has methane, that's why I have blue on me. Hydrogen and helium are the rest of my atmosphere. I have 13 moons with one still waiting to confirm it's here. Mine is 392 degrees, an average day on me. And my winds are the strongest than any planet in 
our system see My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks About 165 Earth years makes one Neptunian year 57.7 Earths could fit in my giant sphere 2.8 billion miles is my distance from our sun One day on me is about 16 Earth hours of cold fun No life as we know it could survive on me I'm the fourth largest planet in our system, you'd have to agree My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks Description below!
get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than me. My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be. And I have 67 moons that rotate around me so free. The Romans gave me my name after their king of the gods because my size is so massive in the sea of the stars. Callisto Europa got a meeting. Galileo, I'm the fastest spinning planet in our solar system. Ten hours equals one day, my days as short as they come. It takes 12 Earth years for me to warm at the sun. That makes one year on my surface, that's a really long run. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than me. My name is Jupiter. system is bigger than me. My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be, and I have 67 moons that rotate around me so free. If I were 80 times more massive, I would have become a star, because I'm made of the same elements as the sun, how bizarre. That much mass would cause a pressure and temperature within me to cause hydrogen to fuse with helium, creating energy. My gravity Four times more than Earth, so what does that mean? Weighing a hundred pounds on Earth is 240 pounds on me. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than me. My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be. And I have 67 moons that rotate around me so free. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There is so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. On the fourth planet from our burning sun. And the second smallest planet in our solar system. I have the tallest mountain named Olympus Mons. It's the biggest volcano in our whole system. Phobos and Demos are my two moons. Phobos is larger of the orbiting two. It circles me three times a day and that's true. But it takes 30 hours for Demos to loop. Let's visit the planet of Mars. There is so much to learn on the planet of Mars. The red planet in a billion stars. Come and sing along about the planet of Mars. I'm 142 million miles away from the sun and its heat and that's why I'm chilly. When you're on my surface and you probably freeze. I am a cold negative 81 degrees. 24 hours and 37 minutes long. It's a full day on Mars so you've learned song 687 is the amount of days it takes to orbit the sun for my year to take place let's visit the planet of mars there is so much to learn on the planet of mars the red planet in a billion stars come and sing along about the planet of mars let's visit the planet of mars there is so much to learn on the planet of mars the red planet in a billion stars Come and sing along about the planet of Mars Go to the new KLT Anatomy 
channel. Click the link in the description below. I am the first planet from our sun, you see. My name is Mercury. Nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree. My name is Mercury. No one is smaller than me. Messenger of the gods is what Mercury means. The Romans gave me my name, cause I'm the fastest they'd seen. A bit bigger I be than the Earth's moon that you see To fill the Earth one time, it would take 18 of me I am the first planet from our sun that beams But I'm the second hottest, I can reach 800 degrees 88 Earth days is the amount that I take To orbit our sun once, that makes one year on me I am the first planet from our sun you see, my name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me. The smallest planet with the second hottest degree, my name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. 59 Earth days equals one day on me, my surface is made of stone covered in craters you see. Oxygen, sodium, hydrogen, helium, and potassium Make up my exosphere I have no moons and I have no rings But I'm the second densest planet amongst other things I am the first planet from our sun you see My name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me The smallest planet with the second hottest degree my name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me. I am Venus. I'm the second planet from the sun 
And I'm the slowest rotating one Of all the planets in our solar system Now learn and have some fun 243 Earth days is how long it takes for me to orbit the sun That makes just one of my days I'm 900 degrees, yeah that's Fahrenheit I'm the hottest planet in the solar system, that's right The sun sets in my east and comes up in my west Due to retrograde rotation, I spin backwards the best I'm the third brightest object to the naked eye From the planet of Earth when you look up in the sky I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun And I'm the slowest rotating one of all the planets in our solar system Now learn and have some fun Carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds Is what makes up my atmosphere And for this I am very proud Volcanoes, mountains, craters And some big lava plains Are what make up my bumpy surface And my clouds make no rain I was named Venus after the goddess of love The Romans gave me my name Due to my brightness above I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun And I'm the slowest rotating one Of all the planets in our solar system Now learn and have some fun Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell I'm EBLMJO555-57AB My name's Trappist-1, an ultra-cool red dwarf star in sight I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me we're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2 Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true my name is Pollux, a red giant star here Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear R136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky 
We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri. Centauri B officially Toliman I trust Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far. And from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked I, though I'm the closest star by far I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins I'm sure in South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg my Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined the nearest star of Centaurus that's all that's assigned we're Alpha Centauri the closest the star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C, officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below. I'm a star. Sun. I'm the center of our solar system. You revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy. All of the planets in our solar system, they orbit while well, they follow me. 230 million years is the time I take to fly. Around the Milky Way galaxy I don't have a solid surface So made up of gases Held together by my own gravity I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 And 7.8% helium HE I'm a star called the sun center of our solar system you revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy my core is 25 percent of my total mass and 27 million degrees my energy is the reason there is life on earth there'll be no 
charge cause I'm totally free My mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system Nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy Let's fly Let's fly Let's fly Let's fly Let's fly Let's fly Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. My name is Rigel, a blue white super giant star. In the Orion constellation, I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy. In the year of 1781, he discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine. Million years, as for an estimate, that's fine. I've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel, becoming a super giant after I expanded and I cool. I expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova. Here is more, leaving a neutron star or black hole, but no one knows for sure. I'm classified as a blue white super giant star, how fun! Which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun. I belong to the Orion constellation Locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure Located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear One light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun My brightness is so grand But I'll vary slightly in brightness until the day I'm done I'm thought to be 18 to 24 Four times more massive than your sun. My radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference, which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference. My surface temperature is 12,100 kK, meaning Kelvin, a base unit of temperature in the SI, I say. The next time you're out at night, look for Orion in the sky, look for the hunter's leg. I'm bright to the naked eye. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation After the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years 
old soon to explode into a supernova Scientists say so I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel, that's what they are. Helium has accumulated in my core so well, and hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells. When my outer shells expand, I take on a red color because I'm cooler than I was, I'm happy to discover. Red super giants are the largest known stars in the universe, and I'm expected to supernova. Go on to the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel Without even trying When that happens to a star as massive as me The entire star collapses and explodes It's a supernova you see When I do supernova I'll create quite a sight Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode Into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I am B.Y. Canis Majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 When French astronomer Jerome Lalande Locked me in my recordings begun A red class M hypergiant's what I'm classified as Now let's focus a bit closer on what makes up this star Hypergiant stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss by stellar winds you see. My distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away. One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say. I used to be the largest star in the universe you see, until some hypergiants like you, Iskatai, dwarfed me. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky You'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye If you have a telescope, point it to the constellation of Canis Major And look to the left of the Delta Star for a Fixation. 990 million kilometers is my radius Aren't you glad you are paying attention and learning all of this? 5,822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be I'm hot and extremely bright and If I replace the sun in your present solar system I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were crumbs I am the Y Canis Majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V.Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course Scientists think I'll explode into a supernova, but no one for sure. I am B.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V.Y. Canis Majoris, my home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am V.Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V.Y. Why Canis Majoris? My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course.
I am UI Scutai. The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory. I was named BD 125055 until my second survey. I was found to be slightly more bright. That's when I was named UI Scutai, the 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum. Am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy. But because I'm so far from Earth, you need a telescope to see me. I'm 30 times the sun's mass, but I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span. I am UI Scutai. The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? I'm 9,500 light years away from your Earth. One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles for what that's worth. I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars, and I am a red super giant. I hope you like me so far. I'm close to the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy. Galaxy. I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me My photosphere would span past Jupiter's orbit as you can see I began to fuse helium and continue to fuse hydrogen in the shell around my core Based on models of stellar evolution After fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron Disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core And resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me Look for me in the night sky within your galaxy I am UI Scutai The largest star in our galaxy Find me in the night sky I am UI Scutai A red super giant in the Scutum constellation Am I? I am UI Scutai the largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation, am I? Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel. Click the link in the description below.
velocities I have an estimate of 2150 solar radii That's bigger than the star of UI Skutai My effect of temperature is thought to be 3200K K meaning Kelvin I have so much more to say I'm the new champion of the universe Largest stars by size Try to find me with your eyes when looking to the night sky I'm Stevenson too Dash 18 red super giant star the biggest you've ever seen the new biggest star in the universe am i i am much larger than you eyes could tie i'm stevenson too dash 18 red super giant star the biggest you've ever seen the new This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a molecular cloud. I'm a type of nebula. I have a high density and a very low temperature. This combination creates a gas molecular hydrogen. That's primarily what I'm made along with cosmic dust within when the force of gravity exceeds the outward push of gas the pressure is so great that i can't help it and start to collapse which is caused from a shockwave from a near exploding star or when two molecular clouds collide now isn't that bizarre when the gravity is too strong i break apart into smaller clouds each cloud is a star's beginning in which i am very proud proto stars are the name of the clouds that do break free let me introduce a protostar that was a part of me Hello there, I'm the beginning of any kind of star Let me introduce myself to you, I am a protostar My core is not hot enough for fusion to occur To achieve that level of stardom, that process is a chore The first thing I do when I break free from my molecular cloud I start to spin until I form this disc around me you see now As the disc rotates I produce a strong magnetic field Pulling gas and dust into my center core as I reveal The infalling gas releases a kinetic energy Creating heat increasing the temperature in the center of me At this point I can transform into a hydrogen burning star Which is when the new Fusion starts in a protostar This is when I cross over to stage 3 called Titori We play our different roles in the star formation you see This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages In the evolution of a star and all its basic changes I'm a Titori star now, also a pre-main sequence Star. My job's to clear away the dust and gas and send it really far My stellar winds create bipolar outflows that decrease my mass Till I'm a main sequence star, my center burning nuclear gas Now I'm a main sequence star, now just like the sun you know For billions of years I will burn throughout my light show Converting hydrogen to helium is how fusion exists It wants to blow me apart but has a hard time doing this Cause of gravity of equal power pushing me in I'm able to stay burning since the fusion did begin There are many different kinds of stars throughout the universe Go learn about them all now that you know how they are birthed This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters.
This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet. Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well, but didn't plan it. I am Hamea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in this mix. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Tories, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.Y. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way Galaxy, and you live in me. Now let's all sing the chorus together with this is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare. Only occurring around once in every 20 years. But this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare. Only because of how close we planets will appear. It's said the last time this occurred was in medieval times. In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned. Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years. But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear. We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice. On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this. If you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky, you can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye. We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead, but we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. 
Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event, the joy it'll bring is plenty. Go to the new KLT Anatomy channel, click the link in the description below.